Burlingame is one of the most expensive places to live, not only in San Mateo County, but in the entire Bay Area. In this video, I'm gonna show you three different homes in three different neighborhoods at different price points and give you a good idea of what your dollar can get you out there. So let's go ahead and take a look inside this house. This is a two bedroom, two bath home. Uh, I'm excited to show it to you because most lots in Burlingame are five or 6,000 square feet. This is a 4,200 square foot lot. So this would be more of like an entry price point uh, in Burlingame, Certain, certainly not an entry price point price, but this is kind of what you can expect. So uh, even though the home is a little under 1200 square feet, uh, we have a formal uh, living room, we have a formal dining room, and then this is the kitchen over here. I wanna show you the, um, the bedrooms uh, over here. We have two bedrooms. At this square footage, a little under 1200 square feet, unfortunately you don't get a primary bathroom, but if you got like more like 14, 1500 square feet, you would get that attached. We just have a good size bedroom, and then the streets on the other side. And then we have uh, the bathroom. And then again, this is the second bedroom with a, a simple closet here. In Burlingame, the setbacks between the houses, you typically get uh, about a five foot setback between your property line and, and the neighbor on both sides. What's cool about this kitchen is for, again, for the square footage, it's really efficient, it's in good condition. If I were gonna remodel this house and I were buying it, I'd wanna take out this wall here open it up to the dining room, work with a structural engineer, figure out how to support the load if it is load bearing, but I think maybe adding an island or countertop here or peninsula would like would be a nice touch. And then the other thing that's a little unusual about this house that I'm gonna show you is uh, it has a second bathroom off the kitchen, which is a little unusual. I must say it's not something you see every day, but it is functional. Flow to the backyard is nice. A lot of homes at higher price points will have like double doors to the yard. This just has a single door, which is again, totally fine. Again, for a 4,200 square foot lot, it's not massive, but you don't have like a McMansion looking into your backyard. Uh, you do have some nice privacy over here, a green screen. You could easily plant a green screen like more over here and in the back. And then there's a, a park back here, which has a couple tennis courts. The other thing that affects value in Burlingame is if you can like walk directly from the kitchen into the backyard. And that's kind of why this home is at the price point where it is. You do have a deck here, uh, but that could be, could be addressed if someone wanted to do a big project. We have a one car garage, which is pretty typical for most of Burlingame. With an attached garage though, you have a long driveway. Most people have a dream of parking in their driveway, which is nice, especially moving, pe people moving down from San Francisco. But reality is there's plenty of parking on the street. And so usually people will park there. And if you have an electric car, or if you want to charge, you can park in the driveway. The other cool thing that I'm gonna show you about this house is we have a, um, a little office off the garage with so many people working from home nowadays or at least having the ability to work from home or use this as like a pop your Peloton in here or a gym space, I think this is pretty cool. You might be pleasantly surprised to hear that this two bedroom, two bath home walking distance to Broadway is only $1.7 million, which I think is a really good buy and it's very affordable for Burlingame. So the Burlingame Grove, Burlingame Gate neighborhood that we're just leaving now is just north of Broadway and it's south of the no most northern part of Burlingame and it's east of El Camino and west of California Drive. So it's a pretty small neighborhood, but I love it because it's flat, it's walkable, you're within striking distance of Broadway, you have a cute little park and you see like some really nice homes. It's it's on the lower price point for Burlingame, but not because of its uh, desirability, but just because the typical home's a little bit smaller. Right now we're in the Easton Edition neighborhood. Easton Edition is one of the two most expensive neighborhoods in Burlingame for good reason. It's beautiful. All the streets are neatly arranged in grid format. You have beautiful tree density that I really like. Uh, the best trick-or-treating spot in Burlingame is in Easton Edition. And you kind of have a diversity of architecture here. You have homes that are um, craftsmen, Victorian, a whole gamut of, of things, even like a couple modern homes, um, which we're starting to see a little bit more of, but less traditional here in, in Burlingame. Easton Edition itself uh, represents one out of every four sales in Burlingame. It's pretty big geographically speaking. And you can see homes in here that are new construction homes for five to $6 million, all the way at the lower end of the market for like a cute little two bedroom home. Not too many two bedrooms here, but a lot of three bedrooms are gonna be like in the two to high $2 million price range. You can also find some homes on larger lot sizes. Again, in Burlingame, most are five to 6,000 square foot lots, but here you tend to see some uh, rare double lots, some that are 9,000 square feet, but it's just super hard to find those. I mean, overall in Burlingame, we're only seeing about you know a dozen to a dozen and a half sales per month. So for someone who's looking to be in any of the three neighborhoods that we're checking out today, 
you really have to be patient. But not only that, like look at the data to get a good sense for what can my dollar get me so that way I can be realistic and rather than um, just being patient, you kind of have a good idea of what you're gonna get. We're just about to pull up to the property which is on the edge of Burlingame Hills in Easton Edition and behind me here is Hoover Elementary School which is like basically across the street from this house. Burlingame has six public elementary schools and just you know, most of them are walking distance uh, from a neighborhood which I think is pretty awesome. We're here in the Burlingame Hills neighborhood just adjacent Easton Edition and I'm gonna show you in a sec a three bedroom home about 3,000 square feet. This is about the biggest that you'll ever see in Burlingame so let's go ahead and pop in and take a look. What's nice about this lot here in the Burlingame Hills is this is about a 13,000 square foot lot, which is double the typical size of a lot in Burlingame. And you have this huge front area, you have a really large back area. It's just very lush. And I've been in hundreds, if not thousands of homes at Burlingame, and this definitely ranks among the best for like a nice garden. And compared to the last home we were at, this is only about a four or five minute drive from there. So the terrain is like completely different and just as beautiful. So when you think about big, old, historic homes that have great bones, this absolutely checks that box. This home is a little over 100 years old. It's been wonderfully restored and renovated by the previous owner. My clients have done a lot of work to this as well. You have some huge uh, living space here in the living room. You have a formal dining room, which we're gonna check out in a sec, and then you have the kitchen. But for someone who's looking for like a home with a lot of space at this price point, this is kind of hard to get this much space on this kind of lot. One thing that people in Burlingame really love is having good flow to the backyard and being surrounded by greenery. And here you have tons of privacy. So even though the road is maybe only like 30, 40 feet over there, it feels like you're in the middle of a forest back here because there's greenery everywhere. The other home, because we're in the Burlingame Hills, there's a lot more separation between the two, as in like an Easton Edition and Burlingame Grove where we were, you typically have like a five foot setback. So here is just tons of space. So this is a pretty traditional floor plan. You have a living room, you have a dining room, and then you have the kitchen here with kind of two doors opening, which is how things were built over a hundred years ago. Now many people like to have an open floor plan. That open floor plan with this exact same square footage would easily add seven figures or more to the list price of this house. Most homes that are 3,000 square feet are typically two levels. This home, of course, is two levels, but also has a large basement area. Here we have uh, two bedrooms on the main level, which is really nice if you have some family stay with you or guests. And then you also have perfect from work from home, which I think is a great surprise about this house, is you have this cool little room right here. So now you've seen some of the main features of this part of the house. We're going to go ahead and pop up and take a look at the best surprise, which is the primary suite upstairs. My experience for those looking to buy in Burlingame, people usually either like to have all the bedrooms together or they like to have one bedroom down and several up. That checks the box in this house. You have the primary suite, which is separate from the rest of the house, which is nice if you want to have your kids in a different part or in-laws or family members in a separate guest room. This is a pretty big primary suite. This is about as big as like I've seen regardless of price point in Burlingame. Sometimes you'd see maybe a larger closet or a larger bathroom, but like this is still pretty awesome, especially uh, at this price. Having a basement in the Bay Area is not that common. I mean, if you're watching this and you're from the Midwest, you might say, hey, this is no big deal, Raziel. I already have a basement, but like here, uh, it's just expensive to have a basement and they're pretty nice. So like this actually has some good storage area. There's an area to park the cars. I think that's nice. I mean, look at this space, this is fantastic. I mean, we're, again, we have two levels of the house above us. We have this space here. Of course, it's not finished with the floor, but that's totally fine. You could just put down like a yoga mat or a Peloton and just cut or work from home. In addition to the private space that we saw in the front, you can also easily access the backyard just right off the kitchen through this deck and check this out. I mean, look how private this is, ton of space, beautiful Japanese maple over there, and then a ton of space down here with the creek kind of at the bottom. So for a home like this in the Burlingame Hills, that's about 3,000 square feet, you're gonna get lower price per square foot than you will in say, Easton Edition, which is just a few blocks away. That's a lot more trick-or-treatable, where I was, I'd say uh, Burlingame Hills is a lot more private because you have so much lush landscaping, you get bigger lots, you get lower price per square foot. And for context, a home like this, you could expect to land like in the low to mid $3 million range. Of the three homes that I'm showing you today, this is the most expensive of the three. This is in the heart of Easton Edition on one of the best blocks. It's a five bedroom house, four baths, almost 2,800 square feet on a 5,400 square foot lot. Most lots in Easton Edition are about 6,000 square feet. So this is like a little bit smaller, but I don't think you'll be able to tell the difference. So let's go on in and take a look. 
What I really love about this floor plan is you have a super open space over here. And then just right when you walk in, you have a ground floor bedroom. This is super sought after for a couple of reasons. Some people have au pairs or they like to use this as an office space or for family coming to visit. And that's at the top of a lot of people's list. I also really like here where you have this open dining area and, and sitting area. For a lot of homes that this square footage, you'll see like a wall like right here, and that'll make this a little bit more formal. But I personally really like this. I think most of my buyers really find this valuable as having this like open space where the flow is like right to the kitchen. And if sure, I guess you could say it's a little bit of a downside if you want to have like a lot of closed doors and more privacy. But I think this is how most people enjoy living is having this like really good flow in here. What's really nice about having this square footage at a home in Burlingame is it allows you to have a few more nice touches like here where you have a built-in area. You can put a MacBook, you could take this out and put like a iMac with a, a VESA display so it's really slim against the wall. We have a pretty cool pantry where you can like stash all your stuff, close it, you don't have to worry about the appearance. I think that's pretty nice. And then just to give you a sense for Burlingame, like what your dollar can get you, this is a pretty good sized kitchen. Now, if you were to max out the square footage of the house on a 6,000 square foot lot, you'd get another couple hundred square feet so the kitchen would be even bigger. But again, like this is a fantastic kitchen. You have everything that you need. Um, I like that you have the stove back over here with the hood. Sometimes you'll see uh, that here with like a hood here, but I'm a little bit less of a fan of that because it just kind of uh, blocks your field of view. And then there's also a really good flow to the yard um, from two different access points. And then of course you can put a TV up here for staging. You know, we typically don't put TVs, but again, it's just a nice sitting area. So overall, if I were to rate this floor plan, I would give this like a 90 plus percentile for a home in Burlingame of this size. Now I'm gonna take you upstairs and let's go check out the four bedrooms. So right now I'm in the front facing bedroom here and this is not a huge bedroom, but it's totally fine. It's great for a kid or for an office. And then you have another bedroom over here. We have the bathroom here. And then we have one other bedroom uh, over here, which is again, a really good size. You have a nice view. And then now I'm gonna take you into the primary suite here, which is cool. You actually have this closet area which is a pretty clever use of the space with all these cool built-ins. And then in the bedroom itself, you have a really nice high ceiling. We have a high wall unit up here, which is um, a heat pump. So that gives you cool air and, and heat throughout the year. Although this house actually does have radiant heat with uh, I think eight zones, which is super awesome. Sometimes in East Edition, you can have a bunch of two-story homes that are all really close to each other. And so you get a little bit less privacy in the backyard, which is why it's really nice if you can plant to create like a green screen of privacy like throughout the backyard. That's kind of what I would do if I had a neighbor next to me with a second story. So this backyard is a pretty typical backyard for Easton Edition for this lot size. I think it's fantastic. Now, the main thing to keep in mind for Burlingame is whether you have an attached garage or a detached garage. So here we have a detached two car garage, which is very normal. Um, I wouldn't say that it's better or worse than having a one car. Obviously with a two car, you get a ton more space versus a one car, it's a little bit smaller. But what we're starting to see is, even though this is a regular garage, a lot of people are adding ADUs now. And an ADU is an accessory dwelling unit, which is kind of like a guest cottage in your backyard. In January, 2020, it became legal to do this in California. I personally think it's a huge pro for anyone who's thinking about buying a home in Burlingame, whether it has it or not. Because it's such a new rule, we've only seen a few houses come on the market with ADUs, but we're starting to see a lot of people including me like at my house my wife and I did an ADU and we love it we have a peloton back there we have some flex space there's a full bathroom it's great if people are coming to visit so if I were buying this house and I want to do something a little bit different here I may, maybe I'd be happy with it as a garage which is fine totally great but if I want to do something a little bit different I would consider maybe adding like some double French doors on the side to have some like more flow I'd consider popping up the ceiling because right now in the garage you have um, a flat ceiling so I'd raise the ceilings Maybe you add a skylight, maybe not. Maybe you consider doing some different type of doors in front and then you can turn this into an office or flex space or for a gym or just be able to store stuff a lot more easily. It's also nice if you wanna make a little guest cottage and you have family coming to visit, they could stay out here for a week and then inside this house, you have the ground floor bedroom which just could be like your office for work from home. The other thing that I'll mention about this backyard is it's pretty deep and you have some high fences, which is nice in the back. And then on the sides, if you wanted to, you could plant pretty heavily to add more privacy. So on this side of the yard over here, 
prior to going to the market, we added these planters, which I'm pretty excited about, and then we planted heavily. And within a few months, these are gonna get to be a few more feet higher. And that's really nice if we're trying to um, not necessarily like obscure the neighbor, but just add a lot more privacy for both because a lot of complaints that people have in Burlingame and Eastern Edition is, hey, you can spend three, four, five million dollars and the homes just kind of feel squished together. Feel free to check out my other Burlingame videos, which include my downtown Burlingame walking tour video. Uh, I also have a video about Washington Park and the new Burlingame Community Center. And if there's other videos that you wanna see or you wanna learn more about other neighborhoods, drop a note in the comments so I can take a look there. And if you'd like to move to Burlingame, I'd love to be able to support you make a smooth move here.